Chris from Mulin from the technicaltraders.com is back once again to offer up some candle clues for the short-term outlook on silver and gold. This and more, including real estate, on this week's episode of Metal Money. I'm your host, Patrick Vieira. Chris from Mulin, welcome back to Metal Money. How are you doing? I'm great, Patrick. How are you? I'm doing fine. You know, Chris, last time we spoke in roughly mid-August, we were looking at the possibility where if silver fell below 22, excuse me, we were looking at it possibly going all the way down to $18 per ounce. And silver spent a couple trading days in that $21 range. But now with silver higher at 23, is silver out of the woods from the bearish short-term trend? And are the technicals indicating that silver may retest at 22 again? Yeah, so silver, it did break below that 22 level for a one day. It was kind of a one day kind of wonder. It dipped below it. It created, I think it flushed a lot of uh, people out of the market because it was a very clear line on the chart where if that level was broken, there's going to be a lot of people with stop orders out there. And that's what we saw. We saw a big, big surge of uh, volume as price broke down, which are all the automated trade uh, orders getting stopped out. And then the very next day it reversed, closed back above 22 and now we've had a really strong bounce. And that's what the market loves to do is go down, run the stops, try and get everyone out and then go the opposite direction just to you know, drive them nuts. That's, that's the way the market moves. Um, and you know we've seen this really nice rally. It's actually formed on the daily chart. Um, if you can see my charts here, you can see in the last uh, little bit, we've seen that, that dip below 22. And, and then we've seen a rally and then it's consolidated in a bull flag pattern. And then it's had the second half of that move up to this blue line, which is the 50-day moving average. Uh, if, you, if you just look how price has been hitting the 50-day and then reversing down, um, you can see that's kind of where we're at right now. Silver is struggling to break through that 50 and hold it. And we might see it still continue to chop around, but it's clearly still in a downtrend, a series of lower highs, lower lows. So we're, it's not in the clear just yet, but I do feel like the precious metals market is uh, very close, uh, weeks or months away from um, starting what could be a more significant rally. You know, the last week or so of trading days on the, the daily chart, we see quite a few days of a battle between the buyers and sellers where we see short candles with, with long wicks. And then towards the end, we see longer candles. And as mentioned, it took us above that 50-day moving average. So I just want to kind of ask here, has or is silver ready to make a strong move to the upside short term? I, I know you said, you know, maybe not quite yet, but maybe in a few weeks or so. Yeah. So <clears throat> these are the bars I think you're talking about on, on my daily chart here. So very narrow range, uh, meaning that the body of the bars are really small. It doesn't move much from the open to the closing price. But intraday, we've got these long wicks. Uh, and really, when you get a pause, something that's tight like that, it means it's in a consolidation. It's coiling uh, price. And when something trades in a narrow range like that, it's building up energy. We saw that energy already dispelled, which is that pop up to this 50-day uh, moving average. Um, let's take a look at the weekly chart of silver and just get a, a feel for the overall silver pattern. When we look at silver, I mean, it's got a, a pretty nice uh, massive bull flag kind of formation. Uh, on a weekly basis, it has yet to close uh, down below this this 22 level. It really, we've had a few spikes down at and below, but it's always seemed to recover. So silver is still in this critical point here where we need to, it needs to hold this kind of level right through here, this kind of 22 to 23 level. And hopefully it'll start to move higher going forward. I mean, it's been out of favor for a long time. Uh, it's still in a downtrend. Um, but we are starting to see some signs of life in the precious metals market. And and to answer your question, if we were to look at the daily chart of gold miners, because they tend to lead uh, precious metals, gold miners have had a really strong break through the 50-day moving average. It was making a series of lower highs, lower lows, but now we've seen some good volume. We've seen a strong pop in price, and that is a good sign. We want to see uh, gold miners perform they usually outperform before gold and silver pop. So this type of move right here through the 50-day moving average is kind of like something like this, and like we saw back in, in March. And I think we could see gold miners maybe pause a little bit, but I still think they're going to push up to somewhere this 48 uh, area on the GDXJ chart. And that means we're going to see precious metals also uh, want to move higher. So 
This is kind of a leading indicator for physical metals. Follow the stocks, that's where the leverage plays are. And then the bullion typically follows suit. So um, there are early signs that precious metals are, you know, just starting uh, a new uptrend. And you mentioned that uh, that 22 level, uh, because, you know, after reaching its recent high back in August of 2020 and, and then looking at that same weekly chart, despite what we might feel or think, uh, if we use a Fibonacci retracement, we see that that 38.2% level did hold where we are looking at that roughly that $22 level. Is this added support for silver buyers that the worst may be over technically? Yeah. So uh, if we were to use Fibonacci retracement, we can take the lows that we saw last year. We go up to the highs and we can carry that forward. And we're going to go off that uh, the high right over here where that first massive rally was. And more or less, we have pulled back. You could argue we're, we're pulling back into the 50% retracement or the, the 38, as you said. We're really testing this uh, level. This should act and is acting as a support level. Uh, obviously, if this little kind of bear flag, this little move up over the last month and week here, if it continues to break down, then we're going to go down to this 50% level. And uh, that, that would be a pretty strong breakdown on the weekly chart, which I think we could see has come all the way back down to that 18, 19 level that you and I talked about back in August. Um, so we really do need to see this level hold on a weekly basis, which we haven't broken below 22 on a weekly yet. Uh, and that's going to be the real trigger, I think, where we see big money start to move out of it. We start to see some longer term positions kind of sell silver and wait for a new opportunity. And that could create that drop. So we are at this really major support level. And uh, on a weekly basis here, uh, we need to hold above 22 or else uh, we still could go down for that $18 per um, ounce level. Okay, so 23 is nice for today, but it's no indicator that we are out of the woods yet for silver. Mm -hmm. hey Chris, you recently tweeted that gold price flag suggests a big rally may start soon. What caught your attention to post this tweet? Uh, I mean, gold's got a really nice looking chart. It's It's got a, a series of, of bull flags, so a rally, bull flag, rally, bull flag. We had the COVID kind of blip in here. Uh, but overall, this is a huge rally and a big bull flag pattern. And again, this this goes back, uh, if the data is going to load that far, this is very similar to this type of formation and this type of formation. The question is, which way is this market going to resolve from here? Are we going to see the current price rally and go up to 2600 maybe 3400 Or is it going to eventually stall out and break down and we, we see it flirt down around this 14, you know, 16 area? Uh, overall, the trend is up and we are looking at this as a bull flag pattern and we're starting to get a little bit close to that that apex in terms of price action. If we were to just, you know, we can draw a line across these lows. We've got price, these highs kind of declining through here, depending where we want to mark these levels. But more or less, gold is starting to get down just like silver. Silver's flirting with the lower support level. Gold is getting down there as well. Uh, eventually, it's going to break out of this pattern. Whichever way it breaks, it's going to be a pretty big move. So that's what I'm keeping my eyes on. Obviously, um, uh, if we see the dollar roll over and sell off, I think we could start to see this move higher. But I, I think there's some big opportunity in the stock market over the next few months going, going into January. And I think we could see a big move in stocks. And I also think it could be one of the last major runs in the stock market. And the last run in the stock market is when we see gold, silver, and miners actually start to take some leadership and they'll actually perform really well uh, near the end of that. And then they'll perform really well for probably a few weeks or a couple of months after the stock market starts to top out. So I really think we're getting close. And I've talked about this for a long time. The precious metal big move, I think, is still several months away. But when it starts, it's going to be really exciting. And, um, uh, you know, these are big patterns we're looking at. These are weekly charts we're looking at, you know, a year, two year long pattern. So this stuff doesn't just happen over a couple of weeks. It takes uh, several months to unfold. And I think we're a few months away from that really starting and, and confirming that, hey, gold, silver and miners are in a new uptrend. So there's still still some time, some chart building to be done before we can confirm and say, hey, these are actually uh, new sectors coming to life. They're in new uptrends. Um, so just because we're getting to this apex here on the chart, uh, that just means we're getting close to a breakout and breakouts usually lead to pretty big moves.
something we rarely talk about is real estate. And you posted quite a few tweets regarding real estate. What has gravitated you towards real estate? Yeah, so I did a, a pretty interesting article. I also did a video on it last week. I uh, put them both together. You know, it, it, sometimes you just need to talk about something different, right? I talk about precious metals in the stock market every day, multiple times on different platforms, whether it's for some members and videos or articles or interviews. And it's just nice to, to talk about something fresh. And real estate's always something to look at. I mean, real estate is one of the best investments you'll ever make. Uh, as a long-term, you know, investor, you buy a house as early as you can, and always try to either use it to buy another one, leverage it, rent it out. Um, but there, we all, most of us, have real estate, and it's one of our biggest investments. So why not talk about it? And you know, there's a lot of really interesting data out there, as I showed in our in the video in the article, that we we've just seen like this crazy level of no one wanting to sell their homes. And the, the amount of homes for sale has completely fallen out of bed. And the charts in there show that really clearly. And of course, when, when there's no homes for sale, uh, yet population is still growing and people want to, and it's one of the best investments, people want it, but there's, there's none available, right? So that's why we're seeing this huge spike in price in real estate. And the higher real estate goes, the more people don't want to sell their real estate because they're like, wow, I'm, I'm riding this investment for all it's worth. So it's kind of like this self-fulfilling thing that more or less people want to sell their homes and, it, and there's more demand. And so we're in this euphoric kind of uh, rally mode. If you look at the long term charts of real estate, uh, the last time we saw one of these big rallies, you know, was back in 2007, 2008. I think it was in the overall price of real estate going up. And, you know, we're in a really strong bubble kind of phase for real estate. And all I want to do is warn people and I show through the the, the content there, the reasons why uh, we're going to see real estate over the next two, three, four years probably go soft and, and pull back quite a bit. And uh, just to be mentally prepared. I mean, I, I know a lot of people, their only asset is their home and people tend to think the high watermark they see on their home you know, when it starts to go down and against them, they, they feel really negative. They feel like they're losing money. Um, but that's not the way to really look at real estate. You just look at it as, you know, real estate will go dormant for several years and then it'll have another big surge and run. Um, so you just have to be, people just need to be aware that, you know, these lofty prices, selling over asking, everyone wanting real estate, um, you know, our homes are going to probably dip in value over the next several years. Um, you can't, you know, always just go up and up and up. And when something gets frothy like this and it were way outside the standard deviation for home growth, the amount of homes that are for sale, um, rent rates are through the roof. Um, it's just a it's just like any type of chart. When you look at it, this is the euphoric phase. Everyone thinks they can make money in real estate. They're all buying them. They're, it's like a feeding frenzy and uh, it's not going to last. And there's going to be a lot of people who lose a ton of money on homes eventually who uh, who are loading up, I think, at these prices when things do go soft. So I'm just trying to, you know, let people be aware that real estate will eventually fizzle out and um, you just need to, you know, be mentally prepared. That's part of the game of trading, investing is you need to mentally know what could possibly happen. And then when it happens, if it happens, you're not freaked out because you already know what the next step is after that. Okay. And, you know, with inflation coming on, pretty strong now everything going up food going up energy going up and we even see bitcoin going up in some ways should precious metals investors especially the physical gold and physical silver investors should we sort of adopt the bitcoin mentality of buy it store it hodl it and kind of forget it and just let precious metals do their thing without too much concern of the day-to-day -day price action i think so that's the way i do it i mean uh, if you're going to be tr trading physical metals, I don't, I don't know. I, that's, it's too much work. It's, it's, you know, it's just, it's not the way I see physical metal. Physical metals are you, you set aside a portion of your income every year, say, listen, I'm going to go buy this much silver, this much gold, whatever it is you want to accumulate. And you pretty much just slide it into a safe or wherever you keep your, your physical metals and um, just leave it there and hope that one day when you're, you're older, or, you know, your kids grow up, they open it up and they see uh, they've accessed all these bars that are worth ridiculous amounts of money. And uh, that's that's the way I see it. It's almost it's just like forced savings. I'm not looking to sell the stuff. 
Uh, if it skyrockets in value because of a currency crisis or whatever goes on, I mean, that's awesome. But really, it's just a, a great way to save money because it's not that easy to just, you know, go get go get your metals and then sell it. I mean, it can be pretty easy with some um, uh, locations where you store it and stuff. But uh, I think it's the buy and hold mentality. If you're trading gold miners, it's totally different. You, you want to get in, trade them, get out. They're super volatile. Um, precious metals are, are miners are great, but only in short stints. I mean, um, you follow them for uh, several months or a year or two, you make some money and then they go out of favor for seven or eight years. Uh, so you don't want to fall in love with, with, you know, trading, uh, metals and miners cause you know, they're not always in favor. There's always going to be something else. So, uh, metals just buy them, stack them just like all the YouTube channels out there, you know, silver stackers, just stack your gold to silver and, and just keep building up your wealth that way. And um, it's really kind of, to me, it's kind of like your home. You just, you, you, you're never going to always, you know, cash out of your home. You're always going to be moving to another one. Um, you just have to always have that investment uh, in your account. All right. Those are some sound words. Chris from Yulin from the technicaltraders.com. We appreciate the time you've given and hope we can do this again soon. Yeah. Thanks, Patrick. Always a pleasure. Take care. That was Chris from Mulan from the technicaltraders.com offering up his view on if the coast is clear for precious metals. As always, please leave your thoughts in the comment section below and remember to keep it liquid, keep it real. And I'll see you on the next episode of Metal Money.